No. This storyline continues to deteriorate for Kenny Omega. So the Young Bucks and Brian and Cutler team out to take on the Lucha Bros. Mexicans. Zero Miro. Zero Thin. Whatever. And Lorado Kid, who hasn't been seen in AEW since Fighter Fest, which is telling. <laughs> uh, so this is a six man tag team match because we have to have multi tag matches because we blew up our tag team division to the point that we could do a G1 Supercard version, a G1 Climax event with tag teams instead of just single competitors. But that would take too long and we can't waste the entire summer doing that. No matter how fun it could be. Even though we have been using YouTube up the wazoo, we have multiple programs where we could do this. So, the Lucha Bros and Auto Kid take on the Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler. So, if you're wondering why Kenny Omega's not with them, it's because he and the Young Bucks are kind of having a um, separation issue. Basically, Kenny Omega's threatening to divorce them if he does not get what he wants. Like an over-controlling psychopath. So, yeah. This, this, this is kind of what you would expect from this kind of match. You got six talented performers. One made of, two, three of them made of rubber. The other one is a psychotic machi machine. Lorado Kid and Brandon Cutler are like, okay, we're great, but we're not made of rubber like that. Well, see Ray Phoenix, we, we cannot decipher the rubber he con he consumes and how much surgery he had to get for that. But, yeah, this was a very competitive matchup. But, is that really the match I'm here to talk about? It's what happened after the match. As much as I could go ahead and talk about the match in detail if I wanted to, there's actually more to this story that I actually realized that I found out from people on Twitter that have been following this stuff for some years now but let's move on the lucha bros and Lorado kid finally obtained victory over the unbucks oh if you're wondering where Pac is uh he has an ankle injury again no sadly so Kenny Omega Jumps in after the match and nails Lorado Kid with a microphone. And Omega beats him down with a title before the Young Bucks try to say, try to stop him. But Omega gets on the mic and starts saying how he's getting flashbacks to 2019 at Firefest when they all had a choice. Omega says, three years ago, I made a choice. He could have stayed home with the people that loved him. No, he did go to Green. Did he go to Greener Pastures in New York? No. So this is basically the whole... I could have stayed in Japan with Cody Ibushi, who might or may not be my lover, but we don't really talk about that for some reason. But we're going to have a journalist go ahead and make accusations that are completely unfounded because Kenny Omega might or may not be dating Hikaru Shida because we have to make that argument because Hikaru Shida is this champion still. Though that could be because AEW didn't know how to book women matches much more. And, like, at least the Japanese women are treated with more respect and dignity than Asuka usually is by WWE management. And he also said, did he go to the Greener Pastures of New York, which is a reference to the whole WWE offer he was given. And the one thing he wanted from them was creative control over his character. He didn't even ask for, like, can I book the matches? No, no, no. He just wanted to say, I want a microphone, and I want to say whatever I want, within reason. I want my freedom for my character. I'm the only one who knows my character. So, a lot like CM Punk. But no, he says Omega pit, didn't pick AEW, he chose the Young Bucks. They were here to make this the best wrestling promotion on the planet. And while, okay, here's, here's the honest fact. As much as I want to say AEW can become the WWE of independent wrestling, I don't see that happening. Unless they go public and they make billions of dollars out of nowhere. And unless they take shortcuts like signing blood money deals and very controversial network decisions. If they, if, but I'm kind of just okay with them being second place in this, as it being the representative for the little fellas, as being the bigger voice and everything to represent them, instead of selling their souls to be conglomerate money-hungry dictators who go ahead and oppress their talent to the point that you're wondering how they have not been arrested or tried for investigations against their workers' rights. 
I am still peeved about third party warfare. So yeah, Omega says that he picked them and they picked Brandon Cutler. They've never picked him. Omega says he knows cows can be a bit of a bit much sometimes, and Omega will give them one more chance and offer something too sweet. Too sweet me by it. The brothers decide to leave the ring, and Omega tells Cutler to go and be their cameraman, screaming at them world, we are done. Omega turns around and then I felt like this was a seriously missed moment. So the Lucha Bros and Lorado Kid take him down, which means that we'll have a match with them with probably Lorado Kid, because the Lucha Bros might be replacing Pac for now because of the whole issue going on over there. And they hit a double stomp power drive on the champ and leave with Lorado Kid. Omega bleeding from the mouth as the Good Bros come out to help him. As Omega gives the <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the, the Elite's dead. It's officially been killed, and the Young Bucks now are in a state. So not only do the Young Bucks now realize, oh, wait, we accused Hangman of something that Matt did, and now we've lost our best friend with Omega because he's lost his mind for power and everything. So we're kind of in this situation where now we're probably screwed out of the titles. So here's the thing about this whole thing. This whole storyline, <laughs> this whole storyline between with Kenny Omega and everything. So, the match itself covered, like, according to Andy H. Murray he, on Twitter, said that this match covered so much ground, including the post match angle, such as Kenny and the Bucks' history, Kenny and Lorado and AAA, Cutler and the Bucks' relationship. The Bucks and Don Callis' disdain, the Bucks and Ray Phoenix and Pac, especially with Pentagon, and any lingering beef between the Brucha Bros, Bucks, and Kenny and Phoenix. Basically, a massive universe. And I once again responded to them saying it's about reestablishing the pro wrestling share universe that was dismantled when WWE ravaged the territories. While partnerships still existed, seeing AEW knowledge is more than just them, and working with two big to moderate non WWE promotions is still amazing to me. Even though we had issues with the Impact Partnership, mostly from a wait, can we get other guys to sh other guys and gals to show up? No idea when that will progress, because once again, I was thinking to myself, you know, this would have been the perfect moment for Rich Swan to show up. Yeah, and then I found something else out. According to another wrestling fan, who is also an analysis and deconstructing stuff. Of talking about the post match angle, oh, they go ahead and address this, saying this just River, as this user is called, at River in the Dust, dust says this. Just want to call to your attention the deeper significance of what happened between Kenny and the Bucks here. As with many beats we've seen so far in the story, this one roots back to 2018 and the events of Bullet Club Civil War, which could be coming back down the road once Japan is fully open and the US is open and when the coronavirus is not persistent as it usually is. But we'll have to see how that goes. They have addressed Jay Whitepool and his uh, association with Bullet Club Cutthroat. So River goes and continues to say, long time BTE fans will be familiar, very familiar with the references to the breakup of the Rockers from the all the barbershop bits to match HBK shirts for sharing an upcoming betrayal and or poisoning. The part of the Rockers breakup that's important right now in this one, Marty gives Sean an ultimatum. He'll turn his back to him and if Sean walks off, they're done. If he's still there to shake Marty's hand when Marty turns around, they stay a team. It's a moment of finality, a turning point that could go one way or another. The Elite called back to this particular moment twice during Bullet Club Civil War, both times where the most pivotal parts of the story both were appeals for Kenny's friendship. The first one was in 2018 of February when Kenny reunited with Cody Ibushi. He first turned away from Ibushi's offer of friendship, feeling the self-loathing and hatred he feels for himself and realizing what he threw away, thinking he was not yet worthy. That he couldn't let go of everything that had broken down between them when he had joined Bullet Club. But in the end, Kenny accepted, and there, there was much rejoicing. Then, subsequently, several months later, the Bucks removed Kenny as leader of BC with a double super kick meant for Kenny, meant for Cody. Now, desperate to save their friendship, where Kenny tries to put himself and Nick on Cody's level, he appeals to Kenny the same way, and Kenny rejects him, leading to the temporary three-week end to BTE, which honestly was a missed opportunity if you let it stay dead for a little bit longer. 
Years later, it's Kenny's turn to make an appeal. Matt gives him a chance to save their friendship, and Kenny doesn't even try. He just takes his chance, and he hurts Matt the best way he knows how. He doesn't treat him as a friend or an equal. He treats him like a subordinate. He gives him an order. Kenny doesn't have the guts to be vulnerable like Matt or Kota were. He can't take that risk of having his true genuine feelings rejected. He has to be the one who drives away everyone he, who cares about him, um, so he'll never have to face the one being the one left behind ever again. So, yeah. So this is what the story. So remember that whole graphics where they did this video game thing. So where they reference you no know, New Japan and everything. Yeah, so that apparently was more foreshadowing than it actually was meant to be. So remember how we were showing all this video game intro with all the young with the young bucks, Riho, oh, and the elite, Michael Nakazawa and Hangman. Then they show a showery figure of Koda because probably copyright is a horrendous evil force of nature. And how it goes ahead and says, Cleaner, remember your friends, remember your best friends. And, yeah, this is where you start to think, is there something more to this? He was never on your side. It goes on to say, and now it's only a matter of time till everyone else leaves your side. Until everyone else, else goes away. A2. So, yeah, what they're... So what that story, so what they took that intro, which was meant to be a shot at best, or just a referencing of New Japan's just being a totalitarian dictatorship towards Kenny for that time, when Harold Miji was, you know, not doing so well with his issues with Kenny, like rumors even going so far as to say that he tried to ban Kenny Omega from Japan with the government for 10 years, which is a kind of an extreme response, but okay, if that was actually true, that's a pretty damning accusation. But yeah, this is basically Kenny's issue. He doesn't want to lose them. He wants to be friends with them, but the moment they start to think for themselves or they start to act out of character for him, he thinks, oh, well, I'm losing them, so I might as well kick them out of my life first before they kick me out. Which... Yeah, this is probably going to happen with the Good Brothers. Like, getting with the Good Brothers is like he's like... Okay, it's like him trying to reunite with the bad boys who wanted to be free. Like, hey, we have much in common. Yeah, we hate the WWE. Yeah, that's them. And whatnot. We, and you're glad you're free. So, with that out of context, if I had to take the best guess... Kenny is trying to rebuild his past, yet reject everything that makes him vulnerable. He's trying to be tough while actually... So, if he loses the title, I'm not going to be surprised, but I will be interested. If Kenny goes in that ring and just starts breaking down, realizing what he's become, when, I believe still, Hangman dethrones him as the champion, and Kenny realizes he's never probably going to get his friends back, or at least until now, five years, since, since in AEW time, five years is pretty much forever. So... Yeah, the added context here, they're giving the whole, I don't want to lose my friends, but I don't want to be left behind again, so I'm just going to shove them out of my life. A is kind of an interesting route if they go that way. But again, these are just fan conjecture theories using continuity. He prays to continuity. Anyways. So yeah, that, that's the weird context given to all this, in my, and also my added theories on this. That if Kenny Omega loses everything he's built, well, the belt collector stuff, when he loses all those titles, his empire crumbles away, and Don Callis and the Good Brothers reject him, because, well, he's not the guy anymore, so we have no use for him. He's probably going to be in a career downward spiral and never recover from it, unless he can fully make mend that bridge with with the Young Bucks, with Coda and everything. However, there's just a problem with that. Like I said, remember I said in AEW time that could be like five years? I'm not kidding. Like, remember when AJ Styles was the leader of Bullet Club and Kenny joined them? <laughs> that Their friendship broke up after that. 
when Kenny had to choose a side, Coda or Kent, Coda or the Bullet Club. He chose the Bullet Club, but clearly he felt self-loathing and guilt for what he had done. And then subsequently, that wouldn't be addressed or fixed for like six years, I think. So, yeah, and if AEW is still borrowing elements of New Japan, I think it could be five years before we ever see an elite reunion again. That Cody's not even doing anything about it. He's just like, I'll be here in spirit. I'm going to go do a reality show now with my wife. And probably few with Pentagon Jr. again, but we're probably but we're taking chances here. I'm kind of just done being in the elite, and it's not like he can reunite with the villain because the villain's currently the most hated guy in wrestling at the moment. That's not Will Osprey for various reasons I will not get into. <laughs> I digress. So, yeah, that's basically about it, and. Oh, there's one more bit of Pro Wrestling Share Universe news. So it's looking like Impact and RH are together now. Probably a bad timing. I mean, like, I am still supporting the Share Universe concept, but the fact it's with Impact, who are currently undergoing litigation against allegations against them, yeah, probably the worst timing you can do that. Yep. It happened on their 19th anniversary show, so go live with that. So anyways, this was Neo Reality Entertainment, the Wrestleverse, presenting the Young Bucks and Brian Color versus the Lucha Bros and Lorado Kid with the added context to Kenny's story and the update with Impact and ROH, probably. This, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out our content in the description below. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you all next time. Peace and take care.